Hello everyone, how are you doing? Welcome new subscribers. Thank you subscribers for following, sharing, liking our videos. If you're new to our channel, hit that subscribe button right now. My name is Reverend Penelope Stewart. You can follow Chemistry on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, today I wanted to come here and I want to talk about divination. I never talked about divination. And boy, I should have been talked about divination because I'm always doing readings for people. Uh, not just for people, but for myself too. Uh, and and readings has helped me do uh, grow, shift my consciousness faster than I would shift it if I didn't have the tools, the spiritual tools. So, and that's 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 really important on this journey is being able to shift your consciousness to get to the next level in your spiritual evolution. So that's what this path is all about. This spiritual journey is all about is. Uh, shifting your awareness going into a higher states of consciousness so that's what the spirituality is all about and so I'm just so surprised that I've never come here and talked about divination now divination you know it's been used for thousands and thousands of years there's many tools some people use ruins some people use bones cowrie shells crystal balls pendulums spirit boards um you know, the list just goes on and on and on about uh, using all sorts of divination tools. You can get as creative as you want to. I think the most important thing to remember when connecting with divination uh, tools, it, it is your higher self. It is your consciousness. It is, it is like a telephone between you and the divine. It's basically what it is. All right? You can't, we can't fathom the, you know... In this, I'm, I'm trying to find a way to word this. It's hard for us to understand that we already have this connection. So creating, having this tool, to look at this tool and for it to, to connect to our consciousness and put images and words together with meaning and to give us the messages, you know, that's very important. All right, and the most important thing, let me rephrase this again because I may have confused you, is knowing that you are consciously connecting with these tools. Look at these divination tools like exercise equipment for your mind or your intuition. It only, they, you know, the more you use these tools, these divination tools, the more you strengthen your intuition. That's another reason why divination tools are so uh, important. And it's important to find a divination tool that resonates with you. You know, whatever it may be. Make sure it resonates with you, that it's going to feel comfortable for you. That you're going to be able to interpret the messages. You know, you might have a, you might not just practice one divination tool. You probably have practiced a lot. For me, I, I just practice, uh tarot readings oracle readings i like cards that's me i haven't ventured out to anything else right now but who knows i might venture out to something else but i like uh i like tarot cards another reason why readings are uh, uh divination is important it's going to let you know whether you're you're growing on your spiritual journey you need to know are you growing because some of us have goals to where we want to be on our spiritual journey and so you want to make sure that you are coming in contact with the right energy to get you there. So divination is good for that too. It's good to also let you know whether or not any of your spiritual work is going to work. All right? Say you want to do a spell or something and you're not sure it's going to turn out good. You can do a divination on that, a tarot reading or whatever on that. And you might find that you need to do a cleansing first before you do the work you know or maybe you need to work on something first before you do the spell a lot of root workers and healers will have you get a reading first some type of form of divination to let them know whether or not you know the healing is going to work or whether or not the candle work you know the spell work is going to work so it's very important that you you know a little bit about divination or getting readings done 
So you know that you're on the right path, you know you're on the wrong path, or possibly, you know, you know, be warned before something even happened, because I've seen that happen too, where, you know, some warnings will come up in a reading and a person is able to uh, take action before something, you know, you know, something inconvenient happened. I want to say dangerous, but I, I want to say inconvenient happened, you know. So getting a divination is very important when it comes to that. And I just love divination. I love tarot cards. Uh, what what I recommend for starters, a pendulum is good. I, I, I still have my pendulum, although I don't use it a lot. I only use it like when I'm charging my uh, crystals or if I'm charging or blessing my candles, I use it for that just to test and see if it is properly charged. Um, you can start in the net. What is really popular is the tarot cards. But, you know, you do the tarot cards, you can study, study the tarot cards for a lifetime because it goes so deep. It's so many aspects to the tarot. So, but it's very informative too. Once you find a Toro, tarot, or oracle deck that you really connect with, they can really change, help you shift your consciousness and really open up your third eye. So the more you work with them, the more clarity, the more you can see with your third eye. So you probably want to think about that as well. Uh, so tarot is really good. So I recommend those two, the pendulum and the tarot. Scrying is a little bit more difficult. You know, people get these crystal balls, but it takes a, a, a lot of focus. It takes a, a particular type of focus to work with a crystal ball. All right. Some people use mirrors. Uh, again, this takes a particular type of focus, you know, way more focus than I think. And it's just my opinion. I think it takes way more, you know, uh, practice of focus than they do with the tarot cards or the pendulum. Uh, when we go, we're talking about mirrors, crime mirrors and things like that. Uh, I wouldn't advise messing with a spirit board. Those are particularly used for seances and channeling spirits. So I would not advise uh, using a spirit board as a form of divination. I just would not. Ouija boards and things like that, no. Stick to something that's more grounding, like the tarot and things like that. Uh, but I do not recommend a spirit, a spirit board when you're first beginning out divination that's for somebody who's a medium and well experienced in working with spirits so i do not recommend that but i do highly recommend that you you know connect with some type of divination because it's only going to amp up amp up your spiritual evolution uh and your third eye and i'm going to come back here i'm going to talk about some of the divination tools that I use because I have plenty of decks and I'm going to talk about why I bought each deck. I'm going to talk about why I bought each deck and what purpose do they serve, you know, and it's the reason why I have so many decks. So I'll be right back and I'm going to share some of my decks with you. Hello everyone, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. I said that I would come back and I will show you some of the deck that I work with. And so here I am, I'm here to show you the decks that I work, work with and the ones that I recommend you get if, if you want to start to do divinations. These are the ones that I recommend. First, I would begin with this deck. Uh, with this deck, you have the, the meaning on the cards. It come with little miniature uh, readings on here, too. The spreads on here you can do. Uh, and like I said, it comes with the meanings right on the card. All right? For reverse and, see reverse? They got the meaning in reverse 
and upright. I do recommend that you start re begin reading upright before you start doing reverse. Okay. And as you begin, you'll see to me, I see no need for a reverse cards. Some people would think different, but I see no mean I see no need for reverse cards. I just really don't. Because even if 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 the circumstance was was reversed, there's another card that's gonna pop up in here if you still need work. So I just don't see the need for reverse cards. But you know, somebody else may think differently. That's just my opinion. You know, that's just my opinion. Nothing is is um Unique about these cards. The only thing that gives it unique is the meanings is on the card. So I do recommend these cards for beginners. You know, it's not about imagery. You're you're just trying to learn. So if you're beginners, uh, get this deck right here. Uh, quick and easy, quick and easy tarot. That's what he got on there. If you're interested in that, the next deck. Put this over here. The next deck I like is the Isis Oracle card. I got this because I was doing a lot of healing. And uh, I'm still doing a lot of healing. And I use this on clients that's doing a lot of shadow work. That's trying to grow and heal. These are the pocket Isis Oracle cards. They have the bigger ones that come with the book. These didn't come with the book because the meaning is right on the back of the card. The meaning are, is right on the back on the card. You have the image here and the meaning on the back. I like these cards just for that reason. Because in the book, uh, uh, in the bigger size, you just get the image. And then you have to search through the book for the meaning. I like this because the meaning is right here on the cards. You know, make anything that makes it easy. No one said that you, you're going to be perfect at this. That you can't have a little help doing readings. You don't have to know them by heart. Uh, what has helped me is having that meaning and being able to expand on that meaning the more experience I gain with doing the readings with the cards. So I hope that made sense. But I like the imagery on the cards. I love these cards. Uh, so if you, you know, if you, if you are trying to do any healing, you're trying to evolve, you're trying to tap into your third eye, your power, these are great cards for that. You know, look at this one, the queen of heaven. She is the queen of heaven, Isis. You know, I love these cards. I love these cards. Then it gives you the meaning on the back. Okay. Um. Again, I recommend these cards if you, you're trying to tap into that goddess energy, you're trying to evolve, you're trying to become a better woman, a better mother, a better sister, uh, evolve, or just tap into your feminine uh, side. These are really good cards for that. I do recommend them. Okay, uh, and this is the pocket size I recommend because the meaning is on here. If you're beginning, get the ones with the meaning already on here because you can get the bigger size, but the meaning is not going to be on there. You're going to have to look through a book. It goes, it's going to come with the book. You may want the book, but I didn't want the book. I wanted to make it easy for myself, okay, especially if you're a beginner. I'm not a beginner, but I like I like things to make it easy. You know, why make it long when you don't have to? You know what I'm saying? Uh, what is the next one? One of my other favorite. Oh, let's talk about the Akashic Tarot. Uh, I did, did this because I wanted to be more. I had bought a past life uh, Oracle card by Doreen Virtue. Those are good cards, but I wanted something more defined. To really look at my past life and what I was supposed to be learning from that past life. Um, with the Oracle cards, I was just learning about the past life and not really learning the lessons or, or energy that I need to work through in, in this lifetime uh, that may have been from those past lives. So that's why I was encouraged about this, this right here. See, I have all kinds of cards, but they they serve a different specific purpose. All right? They all serve a different specific purpose. All right? And you'll meet a lot of card readers. I mean, they have, some of them have over 100 cards. 
they just they just have a lot of cards and I have these are not even all my cards I have even have more than these these are just a few that I'm going to share with you uh, today uh, I like these cards but what's so difficult about these uh, what really helps me with these is that I already know tarot and these cards I don't care what cards you get many of them are going to be based off the tarot okay um so i can see the tarot in here so you see the reflection card it reminds me of the moon all right it reminds, reminds me of the moon card in the regular tarot deck uh and the keys here represent that's what i don't like is what she uses to represent uh you know to represent represent things like keys this represent earth earth or the pinnacles so to speak okay and then the scrolls are more like for communication okay uh yeah more like for communication and then you have these forces that comes up too and the forces are something i would like to say something that naturally occur something that naturally occurs it deals with our, our again mind see this is where it gets twisted at with the forces and and uh the scrolls i think that that should be different and then the roses here represents relationships so and i'm still learning these cards because i mean i just think it's just so far at the, i think these two right here are just so far-fetched and i'm still learning I'm still learning these cards. Even though they're like the tarot, some of the meaning is very different from the tarot. So I'm still learning. I did a, a couple of Akashic records, but I have to go slow with uh with the messages to make sure I'm I'm interpreting them correctly. So I'm still learning a lot about the Akashic tar tarot. And I tell you what, if there was another tarot, Akashic tarot, or oracle that came out, come out, I would get the Akashic tarot because this one is just, it's so much. I just feel like it's so much. Even though it's accurate, it does help. Uh, it's worth getting if you're trying to work through some things. Very accurate, you know. But it's 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 just too much. I just feel like it's too complicated. The rep, you know, the symbology just doesn't line up enough for me you know it doesn't line up enough for me that's what you know but they're good cards and like i said if there was another akashic card that came out i would probably buy them just to see if they were a lot more easier to handle or to interpret than these cards okay this because these gonna take these take quite a bit of study it's almost like learning uh, tarot for the first time studying these cards so i'm still working on this deck right here even though i'm pretty good at it it still takes some study and going slow when i give these readings it's the kasha tarot i do recommend it if you're interested in doing uh looking at some past life and seeing what past life is affecting you now Okay, so I got these cards. These cards are called Angels and Ancestors cards. I love these cards. I fell in love with these cards. I think a friend of mine, I'm trying to think who bought these. I think, I don't know if I bought them or somebody bought them for me. But I love these cards. I fell in love with these cards. Uh, I use these cards to talk to the ancestors. And they do a perfect, great job of that. I like some of the imagery in these cards. Uh, I'm I'm really attracted to indigenous that indigenous uh, chromatic um, culture, you know the, the colors and and indigenous cultures. So I like this a lot of the imagery in this card. I fell in love with uh, even some of the card meanings. This remind me a lot. I see some of the tarot in this as well. This is another one of my favorite images uh that i like you know this is another favorite image i like you know so uh and see i i don't like this because i feel like it's just too new agey 
It's too new agey. Uh, that's just me. You know, that's just how I feel. But this, these are some really good. If you're interested in communicating with your ancestors and you feel, you know, like this is these, these are this is like a telephone. Like I said, these oracle cards, these tarot cards are just like telephone. Uh, they're just like a a, a a cell phone. They connect you with spirit. They connect you with the divine, whatever purpose. All right, it's your consciousness. The more you you use them, the more intuitive you become. The easier it is to talk with that spirit or your spirit guides, your ancestors that you're trying to speak with. So, I do. Uh, I recommend these cards. I love them. I haven't found anything better than these angels and ancestors cards. I haven't found anything better, uh, but I'm willing to try. You know. Uh, another card if I see some more ancestors cards I would buy them as well because I just anything that is going to better my communication uh, with guidance and direction from the ancestors I will buy but these are just perfect I love these they have helped me so much I've gained a lot of insight by using these angels and ancestors cards okay if you're interested in those connecting with the ancestors I like these cards um the next card I got is the, I got these cards and these are called the Psychic Tarot for the Heart Oracle Deck. I like these cards. They're very easy to use because they remind you so much of the tarot. There's not much difference from the, these cards. Uh, they're uh, by John Holland. They're by John Holland. There's not much difference from this card. They come with the book come with the book um the difference in these cards is you don't see the cups or wands or anything like that he has that in a color code for instance the purple cards represent wands you see the purple border that represents wands all right and this is the nine of wands he kept this is totally focused on relationships and this is why I bought this card because I was working for this organization and I kept getting these calls about love and relationships and um, it was kind of hard for me, you know, I, I was slowing down trying to figure out what was going on with the regular tarot and I said, you know what, I need something specifically designed for relationships and so I got this. These works work very good, all right, they work very good. All right, rest and consider. This is the nine of wands. And so this is uh, the sun. This would be the sun in the regular tarot deck, but here he has shine. You see, and it's re in the a major arcana are represented by black border. They have a black border around them. Uh, let's see. So there, you, you know, and then this would be the, uh, I think this would be the temperance card. And he has balance here. You see the face of a man or a woman. 14. That would be the temperance card. Uh, and then you see three instead of this is, this would, this represents the mind. The blue border represents air. Uh, swords. This would be swords. And see, you see he has the, it's three. It's the three of, three of air, a three, you know, a three of, of swords. And he has si sadness and isolation. And that's exactly what uh, it kind of means, the three of swords mean in the regular tarot. Sadness, heartache, break, you know, that's what that means. So I like these cards. They're really good. They're really good in relationships. If you're trying to repair any relationship, friendship, they're good with that. Uh, they really tell you what the other person is thinking and what steps you need to do to heal the relationship or what adjustments you need to make in yourself to uh, have a more healthy relationship. It even tells you if the energy is off in you or the other person because it has a chakra. He has chakra cards in here and tell you what chakra needs to be repaired in order to balance the relationship, balance you out so you can experience more love and joy in relationships. So I like these cards. 
very easy to read if you're used to the tarot. If you're familiar with the tarot and you've gotten, you know, you've gotten comfortable with the tarot, I recommend these cards. But if you, you're not familiar with the tarot at all and you, you haven't used the tarot before, I don't recommend them, you know, because you'll have to learn the double meaning behind it, you know, because these cards are based off the regular tarot. All right, so I'd recommend after you've you've mastered the tarot a little bit, you can go to the psychic uh, the psychic tarot for the heart. That's the name of these. I don't even know how much. I think these were on sale. I got these on sale on on um, I forgot that that website. Uh, Hay House. Got these on sale at Hay House. These are my absolute favorite. These have replaced my Angel Tarot. When I first, you know, when I first, when I got used to doing the regular tarot, my next tarot cards was the Angel Tarot. Well, I got those put up because they seem pretty tired. I mean, I, I use them for all my readings. Uh, and I can feel the energy, uh, like they were just saying, I'm tired, put me down for a little while. I just need to rest. So I got them resting with the, a crystal on top of them rejuvenating so they're resting and uh, right when I decided to rest them somebody gave me the fairy tarot I didn't think I was gonna like these at first uh, but I've come to love them and I'll tell you why I've come to love them because they have the seasons on them and what I see as an advantage and you some some uh, card readers may not agree with me is that it helps me with timing if somebody asks me well you know what when do you think i'm gonna move in this house and i can go to uh it's gonna be between autumn it's gonna be, be between september and uh sometime the first of december maybe around the 10th of the month maybe around the 10th of the month or 10 days after uh, 10 days within the, the, the autumn the autumn month. So I can give them a pretty good estimate. That's what I like about these. Uh, that gives them an edge because I get a lot of people to ask me, well, when is this going to happen? Or when is that going to happen? Uh, even though I can't give them precise, because uh, timing with Tara is very complicated. Even though I can't give them a precise day, I can give them some sort of estimate when things will happen. Uh, but it won't be, you know, very specific so that's that's uh, uh very hard to do but i do like this tarot uh like I, like I said i like it because it has the it has the seasons on here and so that makes it easier for prediction it's exactly like the tarot it's just more gentle more kind uh reading the, the images are not fri not frightening so i like these as well uh, it's also a good idea to keep a crystal on top of your cards to make sure you're sealing in the energy. You're keeping them protected uh, when you uh, not you are not using them or to keep them wrapped. So everyone, but I'll just keep them protected and keep your energy uh, protected in the cards. So make sure you're putting them in a very safe and protected place. I hope this video was helpful and it was insightful and gave you some ideas on what tarot cards or what divination will work for you. Thank you for being here with me today. Light and love. May the ancestors be with you.